Thank you, Dean Matt. She didn't fully disclose she's my boss, so I have to, uh, to behave today. I know uh, another boss I have, a couple of them in the audience are having lunch, they're hiding. Senator Henry, uh, colleague of mine from the Senate, our um, majority leader, and Representative Jakes, wherever he's hiding, Brigadier General Jakes, maybe he ran away. Um, they, we work together in the legislature, and I have full disclosure, I know who the real bosses are, right? But um, I thank you for your um, tolerance. Please continue to eat. I am the consummate public health nurse and mother, so we love it when people are eating and breaking bread together. We are very happy when that occurs. On behalf of Governor Carney, um, I wanted to bring greetings. I know he wishes that he were here. And any of you who followed Governor Carney, and some of you in this room, show of hands, taught Governor Carney, have worked with him, <clears throat> Dan Rich in the front here, um, and have watched that journey. And this year's action report that he put forth, two of the major items are health and education. So today, I'm gonna be very brief, at most maybe five minutes, three minutes or less, to just highlight a couple of thoughts that uh, we have and how important this issue is today. And again, I could go on and tell stories. As I look at each table, I see friends from the community, the nonprofits. I see colleagues at the university. I see students who look younger than me now and still. And I also uh, see leaders and those who've gone before me, before Governor Carney, who really have laid the work. And it's always a pleasure to be certainly with our president uh, and our acting vice Pro our provost and other deans of distinction. I am very honored to be at the university and I was sharing with uh, Dan Rich earlier today, I was sorry I didn't get to hear the panel with he and others, but it was exactly 21 years ago, September of 1996, I was recruited to come back to UD, to come here and to bring back community health, population health into the nursing curriculum. And so kind of we cycle through these phases of ebb and flow. And I thought, wow, as I go back, you know, at that time, you know, whether it was Dan Rich and now we've got Aaron Knight out there doing population health. And I know this morning with Dr. Rite speaking about those issues, we've made a huge impact of leveraging resources at the university. And if we economically had to look at what we have done from a workforce perspective, as well as the many grants and programs and partnerships, it is a multi-million dollar endeavor that we've accomplished. So I think that deserves a, a round of applause. <laughs> and it starts small, and the most important thing is with the community. And today's sponsor, the Health Sci Alliance, Health Science Alliance, I want to give a shout out to all of those partners. Those of you who are on the board, a part of the Health Science Alliance, would you please stand? Let's recognize you. Don't be shy. I know that there's partners here. We want to say thank you because you get it. You get that at the front line. And as our vice president, no small feat, by the way, to follow speaking after the vice president, and your congressional delegation, thank you very much for that, although at least you're having lunch. Um, not always easy to follow them, uh, but they get the fact that it's one person at a time, one doorstep at a time, and you'll hear each of the themes today, and I think this afternoon, as you take and launch action steps, because that's what we want. What are the actionable items? And some of you in different communities have been doing this for years, but we have to continue to build upon those strengths, whether it's our prisons, our occupational health, our shelters, our school setting. And I know Secretary Bonning is hiding over by the back door, but I see her pretty red blazer. And you heard from her this morning, uh, Secretary Bonning gets it along with our current Secretary Walker, and we have Dr. Rite here, the marriage between health and education. It's kind of synergistic. Those of us who teach, I was teaching bright and early this morning here on campus, community health, population health. And it really is about these intertwined arrows of how health influences education and education influences health. And whether we're talking our young children or preterm, cradle till grave, they are interconnected. And those of you who've been doing research here know that no matter what your zip code, 
no matter what your race, no matter what your background, we should not have differences and discriminatory outcomes on access to service. You shouldn't have more gun violence based on your zip code, and you should not have a higher infant mortality rate. And we have got to continue to address that. I know Governor Carney in his action report and others wholeheartedly gets that. And with you and with communities of multiple cultures, multiple backgrounds, we have to move the needle forward. And I know from our president on down, we've heard about the violence and the social determinants of health. So our goal would be that this afternoon, when you leave here, the state very much looks forward to looking at those actionable items, working intergovernmentally with county and local government, as well as our federal delegation, to make those absolute changes, because together we can make that difference. And for me, you know, being with students on that front line, seeing that we're working with community is really how things get accomplished and how things get done. And I could go on and talk about this study or that study, but together we can make this happen. And across academic settings, whether it's Dell Tech and Dell State, UD, partnering with Wilmington, how many of our other colleagues from higher education, show of hands please, other institutions that are here today. Thank you all for being here. Together, we can merge and work with our data to make a real huge difference in the state. Wrapping up, those of you who know me know that this year I've been especially uh, interested in working with, I know Dr. Rate, who's leading this afternoon to go work with the uh, Addiction Action Committee, been working on behavioral and mental health. And as I stated, no matter what your zip code or your background, you really should have equality and not discrimination. One group, along with many groups that have been discriminated across the ages, have been those persons with mental health, substance use disorder. And we are going to really try, under the governor's leadership and our behavioral health consortium, and leaders in this uh, legislature, whether it be Senator Townsend, Senator Henry, Representative Benz, Representative Jakes, where we're coming together and we're laying out a plan of action like we successfully did with cancer, where we are gonna move the needle and really lay out a 15-year plan, 12-year plan, five years, and next year, where we can begin to eliminate those issues in mental health and gaps and silos. And a lot of it's with kids. And today is about kids and children. And we know that children have to have access to solid mental health prevention services, trauma prevention. If you're in a household where people don't have food, we don't have appropriate housing, where our parents are on substances, or we're witnessing violence, that is going to impact our health and our outcomes. So whether we're looking at trauma at our doorstep, pollutants in our air, waterway, all of these things come together as social determinants. Governor Carney gets it, I get it. I wanted you to know from the bottom of my heart in both hats today, Professor Nurse Hat at UD as well as Lieutenant Governor, I am here and committed and ready. I think anybody who's known me works with me. We don't collect dust. Uh, things happen, things move. And so I'm giving you my commitment, uh, the governor's commitment, to uh, be there to support you as you come out with plans. And so hopefully when we reconvene, uh, sometime maybe six months or a year from now, we'll have some really good actionable items. So thank you to each and every one of you, community members, nonprofits, academicians, those of you who are here in a different capacity. Together, I am convinced that we can move these things, change our outcomes, and continue to make Delaware stronger and better. So I will stop speaking to let you now move on to your next course. Um, now that you've had your salad, you will now get to continue to eat. And so just thank you and look forward to working with you.